you knew the road was a magnet for wolves and brigands. On the other hand, the beach had proved relatively safe. The other should clear the camp overlooking it. The way should be safe. There were some fishing nets and cages. Abandoned maybe. Maybe the fishermen were out in the boats. That answered the question. Wolves. She had learned that she could use her longer height to keep the wolves off her. The water was just too deep for them to do anything except swim. Ah yes, Corundum. She knew that she could smelt it with iron to get steel. Just beyond that, she saw a house. It was more than just a fisherman's humble shack. It was in too good condition to be abandoned. Looks like the owner's not home. Probably some rich fop's vacation house. And it's pretty well locked. Maybe even some tinkerer's house. The tools and materials on the table were only useful to handy people. Yes, probably someone who came for some fresh air, but spent most of the time elsewhere. That elevator reinforced the thinking that this was some tinkerer. There's probably some workshop up there. This was used to get the materials to the second floor. Their own little private pier, and a couple of boats too. But this was the spot that Yero's coffer had supposedly been thrown out to sea. The letters had been carefully wrapped in sealed bags. Luckily that had stopped the water from destroying them. This Yero seemed to be a scholar as well as a magister. And that wasn't always the case. Some mages were content to just throwing fireballs around. And didn't care for how it was possible. What a strange circle of stones. These two skeletons were sitting at the edge of the water, holding strange poses. Almost like they'd been turned into statues in the middle of a lively debate, and the flesh worn away by the wind over time. They'd not left any clues, and all she could do was guess. Maybe the wine had been poisoned. She practiced her marksmanship on a few more crabs. But then came across the biggest crab she'd ever seen. Or the remains of one at least. Only the shell remained. That monstrous claw would have snapped her in half if it was still alive. But it was dead, so she jumped on it and took in the vista. Another house. And this one with some kind of monorail. It fit the description that Jesper had given her. The garden hadn't been tended for a while. And the holes in the walls spoke of an abandoned house. This must be Yero's house. That was blood, and there was a giant rat there. That was the last rat. Looks like the place hadn't been abandoned for long. Nobody leaves a coin behind like this. Ah, the dark magics of necromancy. Looks like entropy allows you to manipulate life and death, but at the cost of your own life force. Sounds powerful, but might be damning to your soul. 
illegal in most parts of Enduro, but it seems that there's people who embrace shamanism and death cults. Melee and Scarrow. She'd have to make sure not to die in those places, or at least make sure there was nothing left of her to enslave. Had this Yero been delving into the dark arts? Maybe he'd been driven mad by his hunger for power. Maybe his suicidal explosion had been nothing but a necromantic spell gone wrong that sucked the life out of him. Gilena shuddered to think of what would have happened to those children if the Magister had shackled their souls. Wild magic. It looks like mages that did not receive training from the Order were unable to contain the temptation of magic. They became prone to uncontrollable passions that led to all sorts of horrors, like orgies and sacrifice. Gilena thought of her own newly discovered magical powers. Was she too going to go insane? Was Yero's fate simply a foreshadowing of her own? So far only healing magic seemed to trigger her fever, but the irony of her situation wasn't lost on her. Healing herself would lead to her death. She'd have to be very careful. The blood she'd seen early was dried out rather than fresh. The door was locked. Soul Gems. That Yero must have indeed been dabbling in necromancy. Some struggle seems to have taken place judging from all the overturned furniture. Boots. Not that magical if he ever owned them. And a ring. This must have been Yero's private storage room. Some poor sod had died here. Possibly someone who thought this place was easy pickings, but ran afoul of the rats. The blood before the door must have been his, and he must have locked himself in and barricaded the place. He must have bled to death. Sometimes the best treasure was your own life. The place was safe, and it was still only early in the morning. Maybe those letters she had found in Yero's strongbox were now safe to read. Yesterday, when Syrah and I sat under the old oak, she said something I can't get out of my head. The greatest peril in life is forgetting one's own ideals. These letters, the testimonies of my path, shall ensure that I don't. Letter 1, 8171 after Starfall. Yesterday, a keeper came into the village to offer me a novitiate. Apparently, old mother Ilana set forth the matter after she realized I was magically gifted. Grateful as I am, the matter raises a strange train of thought. Maybe some grotesque way. It was good that my mother died that day. Why, you ask? Because it opened my eyes. Before, it was my only wish to make father proud. Father, a fisherman. Now, I cannot help but feel anger when observing the village folk around me. Day in, day out, they follow the same routine. Wake up, work, carouse, and sleep. Is this all they want from life? Don't they too take note of the ills in this world and have the desire to change something? Only Sira is different. She understands what drives me and she shares my dream of a better world. I told the Keeper that I will come, but only if she is granted an apprenticeship in Ark. Thank Malthus, he agreed. So Alfred had been right about Yero being driven by a need for something greater. But he hadn't mentioned Sira at all, despite the letter making it seem as if she was also from the same village. Maybe he hadn't been as close to Yero as he thought. Letter 2, 8186 after Starfall. Fifteen years have passed since my last letter. Sira and I now live together in a small house in Ark. It's been five years since I undertook the holy trial, but despite what I thought, 
I did not join the military wing of the Order. Instead, I became a Magister. Why? Because the children I teach will shape the future of this world. Because there is enough bloodshed already. Two weeks ago, the Trachessa proved Sira's concept of the food bank. It obliges every wealthy citizen of Ark to pay a handful of pennies to the Order, with which the Order will provide a warm meal for the Undercity dwellers once a week. Their reactions embittered me. The decree does not ask for much, yet they protested as though we threatened to take their homes. I will never understand people like them. As sad as this may sound, I am happy. My life provides me with a feeling of purpose, and I still have Syrah at my side after all these years. It is strange, even though I know you will never read these lines, it almost feels as if through them I can speak to you. Sira, I love you. The food bank, what an interesting concept. Clearly Sira was a positive influence on Yero. He directed his restless energy towards constructive goals. Sira is dead. Killed by two undercity dwellers as she helped prepare the food bank. How swiftly these words are written, yet how can I even remotely begin to express this pain, this void? Sira always said it helps to write, yet it doesn't. I sit here watching the ink dry and the letters form the words of a stranger, a stranger in my own body. I am a stranger when I wake up in the morning. I am a stranger when the sun sets at dusk. I am a stranger when I lie in bed at night. The path condemns suicide as a crime because we all have a purpose in this world. But what is mine? I look ahead and I see thirty winters of solitude. I look back and I see nothing but a trail of broken dreams. Our food bank caused brawls and murder in the Undercity. The rich forced the Trachessa to revoke the decree. So tell me, Malthus, is this my purpose? To fail? My thoughts are chaos and I'm too tired to continue writing. It looks like one meal per week just hadn't been enough. The food bank had shown the Undercity denizens a hope that it simply couldn't fulfill. Desperate people will take food when hungry enough, even if it means taking it from the mouths of others. In a way, it was predictable that rioting and murder would happen. Maybe if the wealthy had provided enough money to feed everyone. Maybe if there were less people in the other city. Unfortunately, the structure of the city had conspired to make Sira's dream impractical, and ultimately led to her death at the hands of those she sought to help. It was a tragic story all around. Kilena was starting to understand what had happened. The basement was far larger than she'd expected. This was clearly more like a secret hideout than simply a place to store things. Yes, Yero had been dabbling in the dark arts. Did it have something to do with Zero's death? Was he trying to communicate with her spirit? Maybe it wasn't the last of power that had turned Yero to the dark arts, but a need for comfort. That bandit hadn't died by tripping on his shoelaces. That plate was suspicious. Another human heart. These bandits were truly despicable. Was Jesper here? Why hadn't he cleared these traps? Psionics. Apparently you can control the minds of others and make them see what you want. Not surprisingly, he was reviled by society especially the nobility. It seems that Yero delved far beyond the bounds of path magic.
There's Jesper. Well, if it isn't my new friend. Any luck? I had a chat with Alfred. Well, well. That's interesting. Good work. That only leaves the mysterious object in the water. I'll have a closer look around here in the meantime. Yeah, I found those two. Interesting. I didn't know about his companion's fate, to be honest. Hmm. Irony of fate, isn't it? Murdered by those you wanted to help. But the Order will definitely be interested in these letters. Well done. That should be all we need then. Splendid. Have you just been sitting around? Did you actually do anything? I did, and now I finally know what to make of it. Come, follow me. This place was bigger than she thought. And more soul gems. But it didn't look as sinister now that Kilena knew what Yero had tried to do. Keep your chin up. Huh? I present a star people's lock. And I bet my buttocks will find another answer behind that door over there. A star people's lock? Never heard of that. Doesn't surprise me. This kind of lock is usually only found in treasuries or castles. But they can be picked. But that's going to be quite the challenge without the bolts. So we need bolts, right? Normally, yeah. It's quite simple, actually. Every keyhole has a matching bolt that latches into place once you insert it. And once all the keyholes, five in our case, are latched, the door the lock protects opens up. If you don't have the matching bolts, however, you should prepare yourself for the most frustrating break-in of your life. That is, if you don't happen to be Jaspar. Who knows a little trick? Do tell, oh Master Locksmith. You can use wooden sticks instead of bolts. They'll break a couple of seconds after you put them inside the lock, but if you manage to get all five sticks into place before the first one breaks, you can basically trick the mechanism. It's all about speed, in other words. So I'd say you do the running and I'll wait near the pressure plate. You ready? All right, I'll be your runner then. Splendid. Here are the sticks. All right, go! good at this. Now let's take a look and see what the old magister didn't want anyone to see, shall we? Some fire. Some kind of fire spirit. Yeah, arrows weren't going to do much. Ice would probably be better, but it looks like electricity works against them. <laughs> Fire elemental. And not a weak one. This Yarrow knew about magic, that's for sure. That leaves us with the question of what exactly this is supposed to be. That's a corpse, but whose? Hmm. I suppose that's his companion. Though it's interesting that he was already on the wrong side of the law way before his rampage. On the wrong side of the law, how? Well, burials are considered heathen here in Enderal, and have been forbidden for about 300 years now. Here, corpses are always cremated. The whole thing's called the last journey. The deceased is taken to a place he or she considered special during his or her life immediately after dying. That's the only way the soul can move on to the eternal paths. Sounds very poetic, but I'm pretty sure the only reason the Order introduced the law was to prevent plagues. Plus, they might have noticed that too many lost ones running around on trade routes aren't that much fun for wanderers and traveling merchants. Yes, she's heard of this custom, but was it really a crime? Yeah. But of course, that only goes for the little man. The rich and powerful still tend to their family crypts. And there are still plenty of old vaults around from the time before this whole last journey thing was begun. And it's good that way. What would life as a treasure hunter be like without the notorious noble looking for family jewels in a century-old grave? So what now? Let's take a look around and see if we find anything. That corpse could only belong to one person, Sira. Now it all made sense to Kilena. A study in necromancy, dabbling in soul magic. Yero hadn't been trying to communicate with Sira. 
Yero had tried to resurrect her. He'd probably given everything he had on this, but failed. Beloved Syrah, this is my last letter. In it, I ask for forgiveness, for it was I who murdered you. No, of course it wasn't me who held the knife, but it was me who infected you with my fallacy. The fallacy that the world wants to be saved. It doesn't. Yes, Sarah, there's still a part of me who refuses to believe these words even as I write them. But just one look is enough to prove me a fool. We have so much, yet we are never content. We could make peace, yet we choose war. We embrace hatred over love. And no, Sira, there is no hope, no silver lining, no matter how much we try to tell ourselves the opposite. Mankind is at its end. It has been since some mad god created it for his amusement. A Quaranian philosopher once said that there comes a time in our lives when we make a choice. A choice to live virtuously, yet in austerity, or ignobly, yet in pleasure. The philosopher called this second choice choosing the void, because this is what lurks behind its pretty face. Do you see it now, Sira? the bitter truth? They all chose the void, all but us, we who dreamed of something bigger, we who were willing to make a sacrifice for the greater good. Just imagine what we could have done if we hadn't been alone. But we were alone from the very beginning. And no, Sira. These words do not come easy. You of all people should know that. I wanted to believe there was hope. I wanted to believe that all one has to do is remain strong. But look where our idealism brought us. Here I am, in front of your dead body, murdered by those you wanted to help. We should have fled, fled to a far away isle to grow old together, but we didn't. And why? Because I corrupted you with my delusions. I too will go, Sira. I don't think there is life after death, and I do not care. But before I make my exit, I will give this world what it deserves. Do you remember? They all chose the void. They shall have it. What's that? Let me see. Uh-huh. A tragic ending for a tragic personality, I'd say. Well, I think that should suffice. What do you think about this? Well, what should I think about it? Yero was a self-righteous fool, just like all these do-gooders are. They celebrate themselves as great messiahs as long as everything goes well, but once they fail, it's the bad, bad world that's responsible for it. The wise hermit has a good saying for that. People are only idealists until it starts to hurt. He and his lady should have simply stayed in Riverville. He thought about rebuking Jesper for his flippant attitude, but then thought better of it. Arguing was pointless. Besides, he wasn't entirely wrong. In some ways, Yeros and Sira's food bank had been doomed from the start. Glad you see it that way. So what's next? On to Ark? Yeah, we are. Here, I've got two teleport scrolls that can take us right back to Riverville. Just meet me in the tavern once you're ready to go. I have some stuff to take care of, so there's no need to hurry. Farewell! Yarrow hadn't been afflicted by some mystical red menace. No, it had been simple human bitterness. Bitterness at the refusal of the nobility to see beyond their vain pleasures. Bitterness at his failure to keep Sira safe. 
the bitterness at what could have been if they simply lived their life without a care for others. Bitterness at failing to achieve any goal in his life. Gilena thought about Yero's story. His goals hadn't been wrong. He'd simply flown too high and his wings had been burned by the uncaring glare of the nobility and his dreams crushed by the weight of a society unready for people like him. Neither Yero or Sira were made for living a simple life of focusing on themselves. If they tried, they would have been just as unsatisfied and unhappy. No, there were people who needed to be true to themselves, even to the bitter end. Gilena couldn't blame them. They may have failed. But even if 10 similar people failed, the one who succeeded changed the world. The least she could do was give Sira her eternal rest. Jesper had said that the deceased should be brought to the place of their happiest memories. But Zira surely must have been happiest with Yero. She was already here. There, it was done. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.